Welcome back everyone to another update video for my Schwab 25K brokerage account challenge. In the event you haven't seen my prior videos, I will include the playlist down below. But basically it's me versus a total stock market index fund. By selling contracts and swing trading, I'm hoping to outperform this total stock market index fund. My goal is to double my money, but at the very least I have to beat this index fund. And the index fund strikes back. After being down 3.5% last week because of earnings week and the GameStop volatility, it's back up 3.85% from its low of the week. So when we look at the index fund, it's at $26.01, started at 25, so it's up 4.02%. Now where am I? I am up $1,112.75, or 4.45%. When you're a swing trader, Volatility is your friend. Uh, I, I, did a, I did really well last week, so as of right now, I am beating that index fund. But I can't get cocky. Once again, it is day 22 of 252 of the challenge. Uh, these are my positions on the closing of February 3rd. And with respect to GameStop, this was a blip. Um, it, it could come back. Contracts expire every Friday, and the third Friday of the month has the most uh, liquidity. So I don't know if GameStop is done, but it's down 73% from its high last Wednesday. Uh, people, people still want to participate or pile into this stock. I'm not an expert. I, I can't guarantee what will happen. These were my positions as of my last update video on January 29th. You can pause the video to check them out. And they have changed to these uh, as of the close of February 3rd. So we're going to go through all the changes. And first thing I want to let you know is uh, I'm still on margin by $1,800. And when you go on margin with Charles Schwab, they actually do send you an email letting you know, hey, you, you just took out a margin loan. And it even says how it works. With a margin loan, you can borrow funds that are secured by your investments. You're borrowing against the equity in your account. And uh, it's automatic, you know, uh, the margin feature is automatically initiated if you have margin enabled in your account. If you don't want this, you can uh, e either disable it or, or, or never enable it in the first place. So now let's ring the register for three sales I made in the last couple days. The first being Texas Instruments. And man, this is just the nicest stock chart that I've ever seen as a swing trader. Now I bought down here once it hit that 100 day moving average. I then sold up here uh, as, as it went up. It, it, it then went down, it's back below the 20. If it's red again tomorrow, I am definitely gonna put two or three grand back into Texas Instruments. Uh, Cause once again, this is the, the perfect uptrending stock uh, to swing in and out of. So my cost basis was 1,985. I sold for $124 profit or 6.2%. Now, AbbVie has been doing nothing. I took this position at the beginning of the month. I wanted to just, you know, get into some stocks in the event that once stimulus was passed, everything was supposed to pop. However, Biden and the Democrats have not passed stimulus yet. They're still trying to make a deal to make it bipartisan with Senate Republicans. However, Senate Republicans don't want to pass anything. They had a year to pass something and they're just not going to. So it's looking more and more likely that the Democrats are gonna use the uh, budget reconciliation method to get around the Senate filibuster, but they will pass something either in the next week or two. And when that happens, I'm seeing a big boost for the stock market. So my cost basis was $1,079 and I sold for $1,080, only a dollar and 12 cent profit. Once again, I just wanted out of the stock. I only had $1,000 in there. It wasn't doing anything. Uh, while I was above my cost basis, I decided to cash out. Something I want to let you guys know is I am collecting dividends, and dividends are part of this brokerage account challenge. So during the month of January, AbbVie had a dividend, and I did collect it. I haven't been paid it yet. It sometimes takes like two weeks to a month before you receive it. But these are all dividends or qualified dividends that I am receiving. And you'll notice for AT&T, I got a dividend payout of 17 bucks, which is pretty nice. You know, if I'm trying to swing a stock and I coincidentally capture a dividend, I'm not gonna say no to free money. The next stock is American Express, and I don't know entirely what's going on with American Express. Schwab had them rated as a C when I bought it. They then downgraded to a D. Now they've downgraded to an F. 
And I don't, I don't know if their, uh, if their fourth quarter financial statements have been released yet, but the sen analyst sentiment isn't good, and I don't have to understand it. If, if the analysts are saying sell American Express, it's not good, that could pressure other people to do it and affect my ability to swing in and out of it. So Schwab, you know, just giving me the heads up, hey, something bad might be coming. That's enough for me to say, okay, I'll just close out my position. I was at 2060. I, I sold it because once again, above my co cost, uh, cost basis. So just a $16 profit. Let's go over the other changes. And with Huntington Ingalls, once again, this is a defense contractor and I was down over 5% at one point. So I doubled up my position from 1000 to 2000. And the stock chart just isn't doing anything. Uh, you know, I, I think I bought up here hoping that a Golden Cross event was occurring. It just kept going down. It, it's now bounced off the 100-day moving average. I'm hoping just to close out this position. As soon as I'm above my cost basis, I just want to sell it and get out. None of the defense contractors are doing well. So this is Lockheed Martin, and this is a falling knife. This is a, this is a stock in free fall. Eventually, it'll bottom out and then reverse the trends. Once again, nothing really wrong with the fundamentals. It's just inv investor sentiment. So here's the November election. Pretty much since the November election, the, the defense contracts have been go uh, the defense stocks have been going down. A new position that I opened is Apple, and I don't need to explain to you guys what this company is or does, but they had a phenomenal fourth quarter doing over $100 billion in revenue for the first time. Strong sales of their iPhone 12. And I think the big story for Apple's stock price this year is going to be their new, their new uh, MacBook Pros. Now, they released a 13-inch MacBook Pro last fall, and I actually just ordered this. I, I'm in, I really do need a new laptop. My PC laptop's like four years old. I can't really do anything on it anymore. And I want the 16-inch uh, M1. This is M1's their new processor that's integrated with all of their apps and uh, and, and hardware. But uh, that doesn't come out until June or July, and I need a new laptop now. So I got the 13. I'm going to give it away to a family member and then buy the 16 for myself uh, this summer. But as soon as they, as soon as they have uh, an announcement for this new laptop, I think the sales are going to be phenomenal. All the reviews for the 13-inch version are, are, are stellar. I went on YouTube and I watched a couple. The 16 is going to blow it away. And then they're going to release a new desktop, uh, a new um, iMac Pro uh, with their new M1 chips. Not good for AMD or Intel, but very good for Apple. And from its stock price high on January 26, it's down 6.4%. So I still feel like this company has new highs to reach, and they're probably gonna reach it sooner than later, even though, once again, market cap size of 2.25 trillion. Next position I added is MetLife, and I'll be honest with you guys, uh, buying insurance companies makes people nervous, uh, given the pandemic and everything that's happening. But MetLife, in my opinion, of all the insurance companies, is probably doing the best. Uh, PE of eight, Ford PE, 7.9, uh, dividend yield 3.73%. All the analysts uh, are digging them. And when you look at the stock chart, you know, it had its golden cross events uh, on November. Look at this, look at, the, look at the 50 and the 100 crossing above the 200, immediately shot up uh, the start of a new uptrend. Uh, I definitely could see swinging in and out of MetLife and, and making some good gains. So this was up uh, closer to 52, 53. I bought right here as it approached that 100 day. This looks like an easy, easy five to 10%. Okay, the last thing we need to talk about now is Xerox. And I, I, I trashed this to you guys the last video or two, saying I just wanted out that Xerox's business model was in decline, that this company might never recover. Uh, and then, and then they go ahead and make news. February 1st, pretty much just as I'd given up on the stock, they announced that they're gonna create three new businesses in software, finance, and innovation. And they acquired an augmented reality company to supplement their platform. So, I, you know, augmented reality, explain how to clear paper jams. I don't know what they're gonna do with this. But just the fact that it's news and Xerox is trying to innovate, adapt, uh, you know, join the 21st century, uh, their stock price is now popping. And 
Let's talk about the covered call that I sold on Xerox. If you want more details on buying and selling options, check out my entire playlist. My last video, I did an example of selling a covered call and I used Xerox. However, the price has moved significantly since I filmed that video. So let's let's go back and look at the let's go back and look at the price. So Xerox was up 3.36% just today. Uh, on my position, I'm up 6.87, and I and I was down five. So that's a net swing of 11% just on these uh, these these news events, which shows you how much things can change. Now, my assumption prior to last Friday was that Xerox stock was going down. I was bearish. I felt trapped in this position. And something you can do if you're bearish on a stock is you can sell a call option, a covered call, if you own. 100 shares of the stock. So that's what I did. My quantity was actually at 91 and I bought nine more shares to get me to an even 100 so I could start selling covered calls to earn premium on stock that once again I'm happy to get rid of. I wanted to sell it. However, it, it popped big. Uh, so let's, let's just go through the numbers and what this looks like. First thing is is that when you sell a covered call or sell a put, your quantity is going to be number one, a uh, negative one. You, you created the contract, somebody else has a plus one because they're the buyer of the contract. So you sell to open when you sell a covered call. The expiration date is February 19th. If this contract expires out of the money by February 19th, it just evaporates. If it expires in the money, then I'm going to lose uh, these 100 shares. These will be taken out of my account and this contract will also close. The strike price is $23. This is what I have agreed to sell to another person. I've agreed to sell my 100 shares for $23 a share. So I'm still getting paid uh, $2,300. And that was a price that I was comfortable with. So the premium that I received, oh, so bad. The premium I received was $38.35 and I was happy to get it. However, this contract value is now worth $130. So if you were to try and, and go on the option chain and buy the exact same contract, it's 130. If I want to buy this contract back and close it out, I have to spend 130. I'm not going to do that. So let's just do the numbers and see what's going to happen here. Now, my cost basis for all of these shares, the 100.4392, is $2,220.20. That's my cost basis. And I just want to make money. I sold a, co I sold a covered call, and they're nice because... You can't, actually, you can't actually lose money. I mean, if you're holding the stock, the stock can go down in value, but you don't lose anything until you sell for a loss. So on February 19th, if the stock is above $23 per share, I will receive uh, $2,300 from somebody who has already paid me $38.35 for this contract. So this was my cost basis to get in. This is, this is what I'm going to get total, uh, the, the premium and then the payments on, on the 19th. So I will close out and exit this position with Xerox for a profit of $118. Now, yes, it's unfortunate that Xerox is now at $23.57. Uh, you can do $0.57 cents times 100 shares. I could have I could have made another fifty seven dollars if I had just uh, held on to the stock. But once again, it's the uncertainty of the future. I didn't know that Xerox was going to put out a press release announcing new a new augmented reality acquisition for their printers. So I I didn't lose money and I can't lose money, which is why covered calls are so sweet. All I wanted was out of the stock. I then sold a contract telling somebody, hey, you can buy mine for above my cost basis so I still make a profit. Somebody was willing to pay for that contract. It's actually a win-win. They're happy to be getting stock that's worth more than what they paid for the premium of the contract. And I'm just happy that I can exit this position and make money. Uh, covered calls are sweet. So here's the stock graph right now. Once again, that strike price 23 is what will trigger me to lose my 100 shares on the 19th. I, I think it's in an uptrend now. I think just the good news alone was enough to get this stock uh, churning. Whether or not it'll actually help Xerox's fundamentals or sales, I don't know, but that's that's not what stocks are traded on. It's, it's about potential, what could happen in the future. 
So I, I think Xerox is probably in a new uptrend. Are the fundamentals proven? No, but uh, investor perception is already there. And once, once something's in motion, it tends to stay in motion. Uh, so I'm definitely gonna lose this stock by February 19th and I'm fine with that. Okay, let's wrap it up. And with Huntington, I just wanna get out of this stock. As soon as I'm positive, I'm selling. Costco and Verizon are not doing well. Uh, I, I thought this would be do, do, do better. I think once the stimulus is passed, these will both pop. But as of now, I, I'm happy just letting them go between 1% and 5% positive. AT&T, I'm still confident. They're going to announce something soon, and this is, this is going to go up. I'm, I'm not worried about AT&T. Plus, there's that 7% dividend yield. I'll, I'll take that. Xerox, I, I can't sell. I have to hold those 100 shares. Uh, but once again, February 19th, the covered call will execute. Citizens Financial Group and Synchrony, these guys are my money makers. Uh, I, I'm not letting these go until I get closer to that 10%. MetLife, looking for 5 to 10%. Uh, JP Morgan, Johnson & Johnson, Apple, looking for 5, 5 to 10%. Okay, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below what you think and how it's going. I'm ahead of that index fund. It only took me a month, but I was able to get in front. In addition, uh, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to my channel. Love to have you with us. Uh, until the next video, take care.